everyone, and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. And I'm Carla Garrick. <sighs> and I'm mad, so I'll just start with yeah, that. Yeah. Tammy, Tammy has no sympathy for me for this, but uh, me and my friend Tall Bill, who is very tall, so it's kind of handy. It's like going out with the, your own personal ladder, put out a bunch of signs. Uh, last week for, you know, my, my race in Ward 11 against Patrick, Patricia Connell and uh, Leapley, Sarah? Nicole Leapley. Nicole, uh, sorry. Um, say my name, say my name. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we put out a bunch of signs. Uh, some of it was not on private property. Some of it, candidly, was on Bridge Street on uh, the overpass going into West Manchester from both sides. I only put them where I either saw Ted Gatza signs or Bruce Fenton signs or other people's signs, which were up for the past eight weeks. So I didn't do anything different to anyone else who had their signs there for a long time. And most of Manchester knows that uh, Justice for Chandler has been on the overpass for a well over a year. So anyway, so this morning I had put gaffer tape in the car because I'd noticed, you know, being the cheapskate that I am, I didn't <laughs> buy new signs because I'm gonna run for Senate again when the time comes. And, uh, and I'd noticed one of the things was flapping and I was like, oh, on the way home, I'll just fix that. Oh, lo and behold, all my signs are down. All my signs are also down in West Manchester that I put out unless it was specifically on private property. And I will tell you, it's as targeted as the following. You know where you come into Notre Dame from uh, Goffstown? There's that, and uh, you go down to Rite Aid, um, Blanking Coolidge. And uh, there's there's a like dead uh, there's a T that mm -hmm. turns with the you go onto Notre mm -hmm. Dame or you go down and everyone puts their signs up there. Oh, except uh, Carla is not allowed to have her signs there. So whoever is stealing my signs, also if you could tell, please to my opponents that let's play fair. I mean, it's a compliment that you actually are so threatened that I'm not allowed to do the same thing as everyone else. But you know what, can we stop it please? You know, please, thank you. All right, I'm done. That's why I only put mine on private property, but that's a different argument. Um, no, Dan I'm, and I have been putting out signs actually, all over Ward Actually, they've been taken 10. off private properties um, as well. I'm glad that I live in a ward where there aren't any I mean, there's like two public spaces that people, they're not even public. Uh, people, a couple people put signs on the corner on Walgreens property and then over at CVS's property, which I think is equally wrong because there's no way that anybody got permission from Walgreens or CVS to put signs on their property. But anyways, um, if you live in Moore 10 and you want to sign for Dan um, Garthwaite and Tammy Simmons Garthwaite, by all means, contact me. I've, I'm going to run out before election day for sure, but um, you know. I'm always looking for good spots. I got a good spot. I mean, honestly, I'm at good. the stage where I'm like, eh, like maybe I just won't put any more out, and I will just do targeted so marketing or. Mailers. I was thinking about. Um, I was think I was glad when you're so when you're talking to people, what are they telling you the most important thing? I mean, it's definitely not abortion, no. regardless of what the um, Democrats think. It's energy costs. It's gas prices. It's the fact that our groceries have gone up 30%. Yeah, I was, we went out, we were out on Saturday knocking on doors and um, I was actually quite surprised, not quite surprised, but I, um, I not only asked people what they care about, but I'm curious what they think everybody else cares about. And um, everybody keeps just talking about the inflation and the cost of everything. Um, I did do some looking this morning because as I was waking up and I was listening to the morning news, um, the Biden administration is saying that um, heat this winter is going to be 20, heating costs this winter, I'm going to sneeze, I'm sorry, <laughs> is going to, they're saying 20%. 28% higher. <clears throat> this immediately followed um, this, the headline that the Biden administration has started rolling out the student loan forgiveness plan, which is being challenged in courts. Um, so I, I just want people to really think about how this impacts various people in the community. If you went to college, so there's one segment because there's not everybody even went to college. If you're, um, say you're a plumber and you did not go to college, say you're a welder and you did not go to college, say you work at Walmart and you did not go to college, all these people who did not go to college, 
Then add to that the people who did go to college. Who paid off their who loans. Who paid their loans, like Dan. Like Dan, me. Right. And people who are maybe um, teachers who paid off their teaching loan, you know, their student loans. Or your accountant who paid off his student loan. Or your attorney who paid off his student loan. And so on. All those people don't get a penny of this student loan forgiveness money, which is going to be ten thousand dollars a person if you make under one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars a year. Twenty thousand if your family makes under two hundred. Uh, if your family makes under a quarter of a million dollars, they're going to give you all, all this free money to just those people. So if you were responsible and paid your loan, screw you. If you didn't go to college and you just got a job or you work in the trades, screw you. The Biden administration in one headline is starting to implement this student loan forgiveness website where people can apply. Then that was followed by heating costs this winter are gonna be 28% higher than they were last year. So now this has gotten in my head um, because last week this, the three minute videos came out and I, I always make it a point of watching a bunch of them. And between that and um, reading things on Manchester Inklink and whatnot, I do not understand well, I do understand because I think it's all just a uh, very extreme agenda. Um, first of all, I'm tired of the Democrats trying to say <laughs> that all Republicans have an extreme agenda. It's extreme so agenda. It's meaningless. So, like the terms have just become so meaningless. The, like, no um, one's even having a candid, honest conversation. There anymore. was, there's, there, there's two education issues. First of all, keep in mind that people who are opposed to education freedom accounts, which take state adequacy dollars that we all pay for and has them follow the child instead of the school building. So if if you're a lower income family and a family of four, it's like under 80 grand. So we're not talking a ton of money because you can get a job, a $15 an hour starting McDonald's job comes out to about $31,000, $32,000 a year. So think about that. So a family of four that makes under 80000 is eligible for these education freedom accounts if they choose to put their child, take them from public school and put them in a private school or a different public school or home school. So the same people who are opposed to us helping those children think that those people who took out voluntarily as adults student loans those they should get ten thousand dollars but johnny who just needs a good education shouldn't get say four thousand dollars for something that johnny can't control now in manchester we know the adequacy rates are abysmal it's like a 30 percent success rate in manchester there is i i'm not faulting the teachers i actually am starting to feel incredibly bad for the quality teachers because how they can go in and teach day in day in day out and deal with the stupid bureaucracy that it exists in the manchester school system and then not have any good outcomes but things aren't going to change until those teachers start to embrace the notion of choice for themselves, of reduced red tape, of being innovative. I mean, if you're a great teacher, I'm like, you should really, really, really consider one of these tutoring programs or micropods or any of those things, or genuinely start to align yourself with the choice people who can maybe help you fix the school by trying to bust these, uh, the admin part, right? Because when we look at the charts of how spending has changed, you know, people will say, you'll see Democrats say this all the time, that teachers are woefully underpaid and blah de blah and we should be spending more per student and all of that. But the point is we have actually been spending more and more and more. But when you look at, at per student, but when you look at where that money is going, it's mostly going to administrators and supervisors and the red tape admin class. Not the actual teachers doing the work or um, something that is actually going to improve student learning. And that's part of the challenge too. So you've got generally, this is a general, and not, it's not every Republican, it's not every Democrat, so in fairness. So you've got generally on the Republican side, you have uh, more support for school choice, more support for kids having more opportunities to get a quality education that works for them because not it, it, this is like the square peg into the round hole theory. Not every kid's gonna do well in public school. I think back to when I was in school, I did great, but I was like at the top of my class and I could have probably learned in a box. You know, it wouldn't, I didn't need any extra special attention. I wasn't bullied. I didn't have any, um, you know, deficiencies or anything in my education. So 
that I think about it and I'm like, but I can picture kids that I did go to school with who would have done so much better if they were in a different environment. But my point is just this morning, quickly, because I knew I had seen it, um, whether it was in the three minute video that is here on Manchester Public Television, or I picked up this other part um, in the Inklink bios, at least two of the de candidates running right here in Manchester without me even looking deeply. Uh, Nicole Leapley, who's running over there in Ward 11, she's the current um, school board school, member. She's a, is she a school board member? She's a school board member and she, I believe she's a state rep, isn't she? Or is this her first run? It doesn't matter. This is literally her words. The zip code you are born in should not determine the quality of school you attend. Now keep th think about that. <laughs> and then June Trisciani, who is an alderman at large here in Manchester, who did a write in to run against the um, now Keith Murphy, the only ward it impacts is Manchester's Ward 1. One. Her words, because she's one of the ones that she uses the term extreme personal agenda of, the, of Republicans. But she so literally says these words. Every child in our community deserves access to an honest, high quality education, not just the privileged few. Literally what they are saying is what education freedom accounts fixes. Their policies keep kids in the school assigned to them by zip code. Whether that school is teaching them, whether that school is failing abys terribly, whether that kid's being bullied, it doesn't matter. They believe that only the public school system is the only option that kids should have, and it should be dictated based on where you live. So if you're unfortunate enough to live near Beach Street School, too bad for you, you go to Beach Street School. We're not gonna actually teach you to read and write, and you're not gonna get, be able to go on to college because you will not be able to read or write. But then on the, when they say things like, Kids deserve a quality education. It shouldn't just be the elite but they're, few. But they're doing... Those are the pe They are the elite they're few. Steal but they're also stealing the language of school choice to conflate or confuse people so that someone who's not really paying attention is uh, maybe confused or they're like, oh, I think they're starting to understand that uh, Democrats are in trouble. I mean, I think they're- Well, the Democrats have no message. Be, they have no Well, the, their no only message apology. is abortion, abortion, abortion. Like, and look, I don't even have, you know, like I'm, I'm pro-life myself, but I wouldn't make it illegal because reasonable people disagree. So um, I don't think it should be taxpayer funded, but it also shouldn't be illegal, right? That's just- I think, I mean, and, and I'm pro-life and I think 20 four weeks is six months is more than enough time to decide to you, eliminate you would think, something but i literally it was is. like i am not like i don't post about this issue no but if i see a democrat posting about abortion i do try and respond oh on God, social media one. and it's like oh my goodness like like it's literally the only issue they have why is that because the three issues that voters actually care about energy costs education, having the choice to go to a school that isn't failing so that your child can read and write when they get out, not leave school and be like, oh, woe is me, I'm a racist. Right, and then, <laughs> oh. I, I mean, in my ward, I saw a Democrat, the Democrat, New Hampshire Democrat Party is putting out Facebook ads, which is fine, and it's for um, Heidi Hamer and Jane Bullion, who are the opponents that Dan and I are running against, and it says that they support um, freedom from freedom in healthcare. And I commented on it and I said, is that freedom in all healthcare? Because what no. they actually mean is freedom in abortion rights. They they want to say, <laughs> but then my they body, don't. My choice when you're killing your offspring, but not my body, right. my choice so, when you want to not so get they an don't experimental answer, of course, treatment. And, you know, you either are for health freedom, which I am. I don't on think. On all issues. I don't think deciding, um, an abortion to having a abortion for non-medical reasons is a health decision. I think that's a personal life choice decision. Um, but to say that you're for healthcare freedom when you were you supported and people still support, which is insane, that we had mandatory vaccinations for people who in certain industries. If you worked in the, the a nursing home or a hospital, you were forced to be either injected with an unproven um, drug or lose your job. And they were okay with that because they're like, well, just go and get vaccinated. It's okay. So like, they're, oh, they're and the people such who hypocrites. It's frustrating as hell to me because 
I'm okay with somebody having a different policy than what, feeling differently on a situation than I do. I think X, you think Z. That's fine. We can talk about it. You can tell me why you believe in Z and I can tell you why I believe in X. You might change my mind slightly. We might come to an agreement and I'll agree on why, whatever it is. But please, by all means, if you believe in this, do not tell me that you believe in this because it sounds better. Well, the thing is, I mean, there is just, there's no rationality or logic. I mean, in some ways we've joked about this. I said, you know, if you came up with a COVID policy over the past two years that was both going to, I don't know, uh, suck in people who just trust the system, but also drive the people who can think, who are critical thinkers insane, you would have done what happened to us over the past two years. But here's the thing, they need and crave the censorship because it is so irrational out there. The landscape doesn't make sense. You cannot both hold the notion of my body, my choice for abortion in your head and also believe that you can mandate an experimental treatment for which there were literally you were the clinical study. Now it turns out that they never tested it for transmission, which I was saying from the start because I was like, but I'm reading all the studies and if they're not disclosing it, then either they didn't test for it or they're hiding the results. Either of those two things are bad. So now it turns out people like Fauci are literally saying, well, I never said uh, X, Y, and Z. I never said we should lock down. I never said we should uh, have, have uh, mandates. I never said that the school should be closed. And we know that that is blatantly untrue, but we're living in this world where people just lie and lie and lie. And I guess no one has a memory. Well, or everybody's so everybody's on such a hot, fast paced world. I mean, this is just the way we've become. If, I've, I've read numerous articles about, um, you know, you used to go to work and you'd work your eight to five job and you did your job and you did your pace. And now that same eight to five job, you're still doing that, but you're also doing this and you're also answering questions and you're doing your email and you're doing everything. And you're, it's not that it's not that we've become that much more efficient. We've just become that much more adapt, uh, used to moving at that speed. Well, I actually so think the same thing applies. They see news and then it's gone and then they see more news and it's gone. And that's just the attention span well, that people have. Well, it have. is, but see, here's the flip side of that is, is, is features like uh, Facebook memories or your Twitter memories or anything where you can draw a through line, right? So you can actually go back and see, oh, two years ago they said this, or here is a really good example. So propaganda in war making is one of my favorite subjects. And it is fascinating if you actually study it to see what happens. So with war, right, they do the big lies. So there was a big lie where uh, in Iraq, they said uh, Gaddafi, is Gaddafi? No, that's Libya, right? Um, so anyway, so, so, some dictator was, uh, according to these news sources, giving Viagra to the soldiers to more efficiently rape the invaded country. Okay, so they said that about Iraq, then they said it, and it was untrue. Then they said it about Libya, and it was untrue. And last week, I saw them say it about Russian troops in Ukraine. Now, here's the thing. If you can actually take four or three newspaper articles with the headlines that say the exact same thing, then even an idiot can figure out, oh, I understand. This is what lying looks like when they have one tool, or if this is one of the tools in the toolbox in order to manipulate you to spread propaganda. And so they're like, oh, crap, we can't let people see that because it's way too obvious when we can put x x x in different scenarios next to each other because anyone can see it for what it is meaning lies to get us into wars who benefits from wars sure ain't you me anyone in manchester no it is literally warmongers who make Money, war is a racket. And so they need the censorship and they need the stories and they need the, the language, the language of extremism. I actually saw a post from Democrats that said, if you use the words freedom or liberty, 
that makes you an extremist. Well, I was going to say, those are probably part of Jean, uh, June Trisciani's extreme personal agendas. Um, another issue, so you've got the education issue and you've got the, the co rising price of everything. The other one probably, um, so cost of everything and people with the energy concerns. And uh, there was a really good um, op-ed, I think in today's paper, it might have been yesterday's because the day's all blurring, um, by Michael Bose, who's the chairman of the House um, Science, Technology, and Energy Committee. So this this is what he knows. Um, here's the thing yeah, about- that's a good uh, slogan, yeah. Bose knows. <laughs> um, <laughs> They, when you get your electric bill, because people get fr frustrated with the rising prices and they want to blame the energy companies because they're because the left would have you believe that the energy companies are just gouging you. So suddenly, it, only now that we have greedy profit taking from the corporations. So, it has nothing to do with the, I don't know, $30 trillion we've so, printed. Right, whether you have natural gas for your heat because oil is a, you know, we know why oil prices are up. Oil prices are up because we have less oil production in the United States. And now we have a problem with, with the war in Ukraine and Russia. It's diminished the amount of um, exports that are going to Europe. It, and that impacts our oil production. And, and our federal government here has done everything they can to shut down oil production in our own country and drilling. Um, they have, because of the Green New Deal, they want all renewable energy and they do not want to deal with any fossil fuels, which includes oil and natural gas. Well, the reality is, is the electric grid in New England is dictated by the price of natural gas. That is where the bulk of our electric energy comes from. It comes from natural gas. When there's federal policies that impact natural gas production and the cost of natural gas, that automatically makes electric rates rise. Now your bill for electric is two-sided. There's the cost of the actual electricity, which is driven up by federal policies because they're, they don't want anything but wind and solar, which is not feasible in the United States and definitely not feasible in North, the Northeast. And then you've got the, de the delivery side, which is Eversource or Direct Energy or whoever you've got, um, you know, they, they're the ones that think of them as the telephone poles. They're the ones that actually get the energy to your home. Now, those costs, the, the telephone pole costs, there's limited stuff that this legislature can do. But there are things they can do. When we when we have mandated net metering, that causes your right the, your rates to go up. When they have these energy efficiency programs, which the Democrats are like, they're trying to stop all energy efficiency programs. No, we just think that Eversource should pay for those, not grand your grandmother, because every single rate payer pay, pays between like two and five dollars a month for energy efficiency programs that have nothing to do with their own energy consumption. So when people say it's the Republicans fault that the that our energy prices are up, they are again lying to you. It is the federal policy, all the inflation, all the freebies, the student loan bailouts, all of the stuff that they just keep printing more and more money and saying it's free is causing the price of everything to go up. All of my construction prices that I could look at from four years ago are like 30 to 40 percent more now. There are the, the federal government saying your house is going to cost 28 percent more to heat. We all know that eggs are no longer 99 cents a dozen. Bacon's no longer 3.99 a pound. Banana bread at Market Basket used to be 3.69. Now it's like seven something. It's not because Market Basket is gouging. It's because that's the cost of everything now. That is the cost of free things. So, See nothing. We say this all the time on the show. There is no such thing as a free lunch. And now the chickens are coming home to roost. Yeah. I want to make one comment about yeah. gas prices. So you'll see everyone going, uh, Kareen from, you know, the press secretary Kareen of the Jean president. Pierre. I mean, I actually feel kind of sorry for that I lady. Know. It's embarrassing. That being said, uh, so, so, you know, when she's flipping through her binder with like a Hide, trying to hide her panic, uh, you know, they keep saying, oh, but the gas prices have come down. Now, two things you should <laughs> understand about that. One is they're still way higher than yep. they were under President Trump. Yep. 
Two, the reason the price is coming down is because they are actually tapping yeah. the reserves. The emergency reserves. The emergency reserves that we need. I mean, they're also doing it because I guess OPEC told Saudi Arabia, told the president who uh, was doing a quid pro quo that no one will cover. Uh, they were like, no, we're not going to release more. So now we have tapped into our reserves. What does that mean? So we haven't done that since the 80s. It means that those barrels were worth, let's say it was, I think it's 30 billion per bar barrel. To replace them, now that we've depleted it, in a ploy to try to and get you to- make people feel better to, so you'll to, vote for Democrats right. in the midterms. I mean, it's literally a ploy. Like, I, and I'm willing to put some money on this, so someone hold me to account on this. Let's look at what the gas prices look like after this election, uh, depending on who wins, I suppose. Um, is $30 billion per barrel, I think it's whatever it is, 30. It is 90 to Three replace times. those. So think about that math, folks. Like it's just, well, it's, we are in a spiral that has to have well, I think about it this way. I, I, it's funny that you say that because if we were talking to somebody and we were having the same conversation, but in our own home level. So if you're like me and you've got a pantry that you put extra cans of soup in, you know, and I, have, I have overflow. When to some, throw on a Van Gogh. Well, I, yeah, don't even. Um, <sighs> so I... I always buy things when they're on sale. If I see something really on sale, I buy a lot of it and I put it in my pantry. So now, the, just take it like a can of vegetables. Actually, a can of soup because I know this. So you know the little cans of condensed soup? You can buy chicken noodle, you buy tomato. Those used to be like 79 cents a can, right? Three for $2. Sometimes they'd go on sale for 50 cents. I bought a can of, so I can put them on my shelf from three years ago and use those. Now, a can of tomato condensed soup the other day was $2. Yeah, no So doubt. I'm like, if I eat all the food in my pantry, that saves me money today, but then tomorrow I'm Your gonna have to replace it costs. with food that costs three times as much. I don't and know how people cannot be upset when a can of cheap condensed tomato soup is $2. Oh my God, I don't know how people can't be upset for especially are folks on fixed income. So if nope. you're on social security, the, the hubris and the just ugh, it's awful. Of, of the administration to tell you, aren't you lucky? You just got your highest increase. You're gonna get $140 more a month. And I'm like, but literally these people's groceries are more than are more than the, the uh, price of living adjustment, uh, whatever they call it, right? And it's like, do you think everyone's stupid? We are not stupid. No. We see through your plans. And if you want non-stupid people to go fix the problems of all the stupidity, please vote for us. And vote for Republicans. It's really easy. Just go in and vote Republican all the way down the ticket. And like, they any Republican I know has got to be better than the Democrats. It just has to be. And I hate, I never, I'm generally not somebody who always says just vote for all the Republicans, but literally. I mean, maybe we Don Bolduck is better than Maggie Hassan. I don't even have to like Don Bolduck. It doesn't matter. He's better than Maggie Hassan. You know, um, Keith Murphy is better than June Tristiani. Carla and Brittany are better than Nicole Leapley and, and uh, whatever her name is, Pat. Patricia. Cornell, yeah. whatever. Like, I'm Dan and I are definitely better than Jane Bolio and Heidi Hamer. Like, just literally, if you're not sure, just vote Republican or leave it, leave it blank and don't give your votes to the Democrats. Anyways, we're gonna run out of time, like literally now. Um, if you have any questions, you can email us at manchtalk at gmail.com. You can check out Carla's book at carlagarrick.com. If you have any questions about uh, campaigns for either of them, I'm sure you can get Carla via her website or you can find me at tammysimmons.org. That's all we have for this week. Stay dry, enjoy the warm weather, and we'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.